They say, find the domain of the function and identify any horizontal or vertical asymptotes. So the first thing we need to do is we say, well, how do we figure out what are the um, vertical asymptotes? Exactly what is an asymptote? Okay. <sighs> I'll make sure I go through that in your um, in an overview video. But I'll see, once we figure it out, I'll show you exactly how it's going to work in our graph. Okay? So, um, the first thing is to find our vertical asymptote, um, which I explained, you're not listening when I was talking about them? Okay, all right, well, I'll show you graphical representation so you can see what it looks like. Um, so it says, for question number one in your outline, everybody should have written down, the graph of f has a vertical asymptote of the zeros of d of x. So what that remind, what re also re remind you guys of is, the zeros of, remember, d of x was your bottom function. So to find the zeros, which we did in our first chapter, is you set your function equal to zero. And this is just like finding the domain of our function. If you remember, the domain is also what makes your bottom function zero, correct? That is your domain. And what you guys will see is how your domain and asymptotes are interconnected. So first of all, we have, um, the zeros, to find the zeros, we need to find the values of x. Here, we have a binomial cubed, so we need to undo our cubing. So what we're going to have to do is take the cube roots. So I take the cube root, because I need to, remember, find the values of x. So I take the cube root to cancel out cubing. This becomes a 0 equals x minus 2. Then to solve for x, I add a 2 to the other side. So x equals 2. So that is my vertical asymptote. So when I'm going to be showing this on a graph, all right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, what that looks like is, okay, it's going to be this nice dotted line. And what I previously explained is our asymptote is a line that, um, our vertical asymptote is a line that when our function our function is going to approach either positive infinity or negative infinity. It's going to approach this line, but it's never actually going to cross or touch our asymptote. So it's a line that's something that they go to, but they're actually never going to actually touch or cross it. And if you guys look at this, so since this line, it's never touched, right? It never, there's never going to be a point that's on this asymptote, right? So therefore, is, it, is that point on our domain? Remember, our domain is all the real values that make up a function, right? All the values of a function, right? So therefore, x cannot be at where this asymptote is, right? Mm -hmm. This is not a point on our function. And if you guys look at how do we find domain of a function, you do the exact same thing. You set your bottom equal to 0, and you solve for x. So again, what we did is the domain, remember, so the domain for this, that, for this function would be all real 0, all real numbers, except for two. Well, guess what? The vertical asymptote is the reason why, because this is a line that's never going to be touched by our function, nor will it ever be crossed. Then we need to find the horizontal asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote tells us that um, I need to look at the degrees of my two polynomials. So if I look at my degree up here, I don't have an x, right? But I really still do have an x. And what I can write this is I can write this as x to the 0 power. And the reason being is anything raised to the 0 power equals zero. 1, right? One. Yeah. 1. Not 1. So since it equals 1, it's just 1 times 4 equals 4. So therefore, I can still write 4 times x to the 0. Okay? We don't usually, we obviously, we don't show that there because we, there's no need unless we're using something where we need to know the degree. If I was to FOIL this out, x minus 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 3, x is going to end up being x to the third power. All right? So what I really have is when I'm looking at my degrees, um, this is what we call our n. I also just do a 
this. So really what I have is x over 0 is x over 3. And these are what we call like my leading coefficients of these two problems. It would be x over 0, x over 3. Deborah. So you have x over 0 over x cubed. All right? Um, so therefore, this is what we call our n, and this is what we call our m. And when I'm looking at my problem, it says, um, so I need to look at how are these determined. So there are three, three rules. If n was less than m, if n was equal to m, and if n was greater than m. And obviously, this one, we have 0 over 3. These are your leading coefficients. Um, since my degree for this one is less than my bottom degree, it, in our outline we have that the horizontal uh, asymptote is going to be your x-axis, or our uh, y is going to equal 0. So therefore, this is the lines. My other asymptote is going to be right here. Okay? So what that's telling me is now my graph cannot cross this line. All right? Yes? Um, in the box thing, it says that if n is less than. Oh, just saying, I like your mind. Just saying. Yeah. So you just got to just always remember, remember, these are my two leading coefficients. So you just take your leading coefficient and you just take your degrees for each one. So what I have, guys, is I have two asymptotes. My graph cannot cross these. Now, I don't have my graphing calculator with me, but if you plug it in your graphing calculator, you're going to get two functions that are going to look something like this. All right? And what it's going to see, what you'll see is these, gra these lines look like they're going to approach it, but then they start tapering off. And they never, ever, ever cross over. All right? They never cross or they ever touch it. And if you want me to prove it to you, let, let's show you. So, um, how much time do I have left on the video? You want to see? How much time is going on there? 7, 19. All right, we'll end the video and I'll show you guys a little video right now. So at least to find the x and the, to find the vertical, just remember you find the zeros of your bottom function. And then to find the horizontal, you take your leading coefficients or your leading degrees, look at what the degrees are, and then apply your uh, horizontal, um, horizontal asymptote test, which will tell you each one. And when n is less than m, it's equal, your asymptote is equal to zero. And like I said, I'll make a video on all those so you guys can see them.